I bet the majority of you guys still remember the GTX 650 Ti Boost by Nvidia, released back in 2013. So it's been a while, but it was a pretty good Kepler-based graphics card for the era, and what makes this quite interesting is the fact that it comes with not a single gig of VRAM, but two gigabytes. So the question is, can you still game with that card nowadays in 2018? How does it fare? This specific 650 Ti Boost is by Palette, so it is a factory overclocked version. Thanks a lot to Stefan Müller for sending me this GPU for this video. Recently I've even checked out the 10 year old i7-920 CPU he sent me over. This Kepler GPU is equipped with 2GB of GDDR5 video memory, features a 192-bit bus width and is clocked fairly high actually. The TDP is at 134 watts, so a 6-pin power connection is a must. Oh by the way, I did notice one fan doesn't spin up. It spins up for like a second when the system powers up, but then stops, while the second fan is working perfectly as intended. So I guess either the fan must be defect or more likely, the GPU's fan controller has issues. But do not worry, I did increase the fan speed to make sure there's no overheating. So we're looking at max performance. As for the test system, I'll be using my i7-7700K again. So how does the 650Ti Boost perform? Is it any good in 2018? So I'm gonna start off with Far Cry 5, since that's what most of you probably wanna see first. As always, I'm gonna start out high with the resolution set to 1080p, the settings at low without any AA. Apparently we're exceeding the VRAM only slightly, but yeah, the game's somewhat playable with roughly 30 FPS on average. However, I'd like more, so I lower the resolution down to 720p, which then of course makes the graphics look pretty bad, but the frame rate is looking alright at 52 FPS. FPS average. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, 1080p DX11, lowest preset, we're talking of about 49 FPS. That's a very respectable result actually. But if you need more by going for 900p, the FPS goes all the way up to about 56 on average. Admittedly not a huge bump, but sure noticeable. At 1080p low settings, The Witcher 3 runs at 42 FPS, an okay result. However, if we decide to play 720p, it's 68 FPS, not bad indeed. How about GTA 5? That game sure would run well with this card, right? That's why I set it to run at 1080p FXAA is on, 50% on those bars, 2 times reflection MSAA, 16 times AF and otherwise high settings. The graphics are looking pretty good. And it's a totally playable experience. 61 FPS on average, quite impressive actually. So let's try out a higher resolution that is 1440p, no AA, 50% on the bars, 16 times AF, but everything at normal settings. And surprisingly, the game's running perfectly fine at 66 FPS most of the time. Next up, let's try out Doom with the OpenGL API. 1080p as always, no AA and low. And I gotta say, the experience is not too shabby. 44 frames per second on average is fine, but I need more so I set the res to 900p, slightly lower. While that doesn't translate into an ultra smooth experience either, it does lead to some improvements. A couple frames more, 50 fps. And last but not least, let's end it with Battlefield 1, 1080p DX11 low preset. The result sure is not mind blowing, but one definitely can play at 57 FPS. Should you be in need for more, like me, then let's go for 900p instead. Now we're talking, 84 frames per second, a surprisingly good result. So at the end of the day, I think the GTX 650 Ti Boost is still quite a capable GPU in 2018. You sure can count on playing those modern AAA game titles at high resolutions or settings, but if you're willing to lower the graphics settings, actually play at low most of the time and can live with the resolution as low as 720p, this entry to mid-range graphics card from 2013 is still usable. The 2GB of VRAM are doing a lot here I guess. Even though 2GB is the bare minimum these days in my opinion, you gotta appreciate you actually have 2GB and not just a single gig. 
of video memory to work with. Don't get me wrong, the GTX 650 Ti Boost is not a graphics card I would recommend you to go out and purchase. It's just if you need some decent performance and can get a good used deal on one of those, it's worth a shot in my opinion. But do not expect good performance. Games like CSGO should run very well though. So once again, thanks to Stefan for sending me this card to take a look at. It was fun to check out what it still can do. And with that said, thanks for watching guys.